name is Steve Rosen. For two and a half decades, I was a senior official of APEC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. And now I'm an official of ELNET, the European Leadership Network. ELNET is the European APEC. A lot of APEC people don't actually believe that Europe can be saved. They believe that Europe is lost. They believe it's too late. They also believe it doesn't matter that as long as we have America, we don't need Europe. All of that is wrong. We do need Europe. Actually, twice as much of Israel's trade passes through Europe as the United States. Europe is the main target of the BDS movement, not the United States. Thanks to APEC, which is really good at what it does, the BDS movement doesn't have much chance in the United States, but it does have a chance in Europe. And Europe is Israel's principal trading partner, and yet it's also the place where public opinion is less friendly and political parties are less friendly. So actually Europe is vital to Israel, and if you care about Israel, you should care about Europe, and no, Europe is not lost. We set out 10 years ago to change the situation in Europe, and we're doing it. You may say, but wait a second, we're the few against the many. But wait a second, this whole argument that we're the few against the many could have stopped Ben-Gurion in his tracks. Because when the State of Israel was founded in 1949, there were maybe two, three million Jews in Palestine, and there were 300 million Arabs and a billion Muslims. So if you wanted to play this game of it can't be done, it's all lost, there's not a chance, that would have been the place to start. But instead, people didn't listen to your numerical pessimism. And today, Israel has the strongest armed forces in a thousand mile radius. And when Cy Kennan set out to found AIPAC in the early 1950s, people said to him, Cy, you're nuts. Yeah, there's a lot of Jews in one congressional district in Brooklyn, but where are the Jews in Minnesota? Where are the Jews in Montana? Where are the Jews in Mississippi and Alabama? You're not going to get anywhere. You can't build a national political movement. But today, APAC is the envy of all kind of other communities because the reality is that there are lots of friends of Israel in Mississippi and Alabama and Montana and Wyoming. As a matter of fact, there are more hardcore friends in places like that than there are in New York City and Manhattan Island. Isn't APAC chartered to represent the interests of the Israeli elected government? No, APAC is not chartered to represent the Israeli elected government or the U.S. elected government. APAC is chartered to represent the interests of American friends of Israel, some of whom are on the left, some of whom are on the right, some of whom think Benjamin Netanyahu is a great guy, some of whom think he's horrible. They, it is not the, uh, uh, an agent of the government of Israel. Its bills are not paid by the government of Israel. It's not under the control of the government of Israel. That's what Israel's enemies say, because they think that with this kind of lie, they can create a problem, a drive a wedge between APAC and and people who are not that happy with the particular government Israel has at any moment in time. When, when they call, when, when uh, it's referred to as the Israel lobby, are they referring to APAC particularly? Well, the term Israel lobby is a little misleading. It's the pro-Israel lobby. It's not the Israel lobby. The term Israel lobby implies that APEC's bills are paid by the government of Israel. A lot of the people in this room are the donors who pay the bills of APEC. They are not Israeli. They are Americans. The direction of APAC contrary to the Israeli government policy? Well, APAC wasn't set up in order to make problems for Israel. So it is not the tendency. There's another aspect. APAC does not take positions 
on issues where its own constituency is divided. For example, some Jews are very much in favor of the return to the land of Israel and settlements. Other Jews are opposed to the return to the land of Israel and feel that it will interfere with the pursuit of a two-state solution with the Palestinians, which they feel is a higher interest. So Jews are deeply divided over the settlement issue. APEC does not take positions on the settlement issue because its constituency is divided. APEC works for American friends of Israel. It doesn't work for Israel or the government of Israel. Let's talk about Europe for a second. Isn't uh, or is the uh, the Israel-European relationship, isn't that something that ought to be supported by Europeans? Why should Americans be involved in helping support the APAC of Europe? Isn't that a European uh, issue? Well, there's no question that to be effective, a pro-Israel lobby in Europe has to be supported by Europeans. It has to have European donors. It has to have a European staff. It has to have a European board of directors. But there's nothing evil about American Friends of Israel working with and partnering with their European cohorts to sponsor an organization like this one. To what degree is the organization supported by Europeans and to what extent by Americans? Well, it varies country by country, but let's take the most important country so far, which is France. In France, roughly 50% of the bills are paid by French and European donors, and roughly 50% are paid by American supporters of the French and European donors. And is policy for LNET set in Europe or where? Policy for LNET is set by people who, who make LNET happen. It, it's a little like policy for APAC. Donors to APAC end up on the board of directors of APAC, and they're the ones who make Benjamin Netanyahu or or Ehud Barak or, or Sippy Livni never made the policies of APEC. The policies of APEC were always made by American supporters of Israel and American supporters of APEC. The same is true for ELNET. When you, when you sacrifice, when you work for an organization, when you make an organization possible, yes, you expect to have a voice at the table in the policy of the organization. It's no secret that donors expect to serve in a, in a, in a position uh, such as the board of directors. I think it's a good practice, and, and it's our practice, and it's APAC's practice as well. How closely are you still affiliated with APAC when you're not? Me personally? Mine is a complicated story, which I'll tell you off camera. Do you feel that APAC caters towards a bipartisanship to get donors on both parties, regardless of a policy? Bipartisanship is APAC's middle name. In fact, APAC is today the most successful bipartisan organization in Washington. On virtually every issue, there's the D's and the R's, and the left and the right, and they don't talk to each other. One of the few places you can find Democrat and Republican in the same room today is APAC. APAC is deeply bipartisan. So that's good. Let me ask a, 